We begin today the Gemara, 14 lines up from the bottom of the Yomad on the Avkuv Zayin Omed Beis. Zok the Gemara, Omalei Rav Yehuda, Le Rav Adem Meshucho, Rav Yehuda said to Rav Adem, which was a surveyor of properties. So he would measure to see the size of properties, whether were regarding a sale, regarding splitting uh, an inheritance. Don't be uh, easy on when it comes to measuring. You have to do it exact. The choporta or porta, every little amount that you measure, chazi l'churkeme rishke, could be used to plant, I think it's saffron of the garden, which is a kind of uh, whatever vegetable, or whatever herb it is that could be planted, and every small amount could be used. Amal Rav Yehuda, Rav Ade Meshucho, Rav Yehuda also said, Rav Ade Meshucho, that would measure, Dalid Ames da Anigre, when it comes to the four Ames that would be left empty in the area where you have the channels, of the, wa- the water channels for the properties. So in that area of the water channels, they would keep that area empty. Zelzavuhu, over there you could disregard, meaning over there you don't have to measure it mamish exact to be to the exact amount of four Ames. Over there the main point is that that area should be cleared you shouldn't plant there, but it doesn't have to be mamish exact. Da'anora, but when you're coming to measure the area around the river that has to be kept empty, loitim shechenu klal, don't measure it all. Agamon explains why not. Rav Yudah letaimei, Rav Yudah follows his reasoning. Dama Rav Yehuda, Rav Yudah said, Arba amiz nigra, libnei nigra. When you're measuring that amount that's left empty by the water channels, that's an area that belongs to the people that, are, that live there by the water channels. So even if you don't measure it exact, we're not talking about a situation of a sale where you're going to sell and it's not going to be exact. We're not talking about a situation of a property that's owned by many people. We're talking about one person that you're measuring for him. So even if it's not exact, he's Michael for you. He wants to have the estimate of how far to stay away from the water channels. The Kula Alme, however, sorry, the Anhare, but when it comes to the area that you have to keep empty by the river, the Kula Alme, that belongs to everybody. So who's going to be Meichel for you if you're not going to measure it properly? So therefore he says over there, better just don't measure, just, you can just estimate and stay, and they'll stay away from the rivers without you measuring. Machrez Rabami, Rabami would announce regarding the area near the river that has to be kept uh, clear in order to bring in the boats and to tie the boats, so you have to be able to pass through there. So Rabami would announce, Maloi Kasvi Nagdi, the width of a person from shoulder to shoulder, for him to be able to walk through, betray every nari kutsu. On both sides of the river, you should cut any trees. If there's a forest and there's trees by the, by the edges of the river, you should cut on both sides of the river the trees. You should cut down the trees to, for the width of a person from shoulder to shoulder to be able to go through. Rav Nassim was once a, a case where Rav Nassim Barishia came by the edge of the river and caught Shitza Amsa. He cut the trees 16 Amas width, which is really the width of a Rishus Rabin for people to be able to come there with their boats. Also, Mashrunya, the people of Mashrunya in that area came, Dafnu. They hit him for doing this. Why did he cut down so much of our trees here near the river? So the Gemara explains that he really shouldn't have cut down that much because who saw that he thought that you have to treat it like it's an area that people have to come and dock with their boats. You have to make a big open area for everyone to get through. But Veloyi, it's not like Rishusarabim. Hasam bin Kulahai. Rishusarabim, the width of Rishusarabim is 16 Amas. Hacha, over here though, Mishum Amtuchi Ashleinu, over here the main point is that the people that are docking should be able to pull in the boats with their ropes. Kimloi kasvi nagdi sagi. As as long as it's wide, like the shoulders of the people that are pulling in their boats, that's enough. Rabbi Baravona Havale Ahu Abba Aguda Denara. Rabbi Baravona owned a forest that was right by the edge of the river. Omrulei, so they said to him, Naked smart, the master should cut the, the, the trees by the edge of the river, as the Allah is. Omalahu, so Rabbi Baravona said to them, Kutsu Iloi Vitatoi. Let the people that live ahead of me, above stream, and the people that live further down, let them cut by the edge of the river. And and then, if they cut from theirs, then I'll cut mine also. So the Gemara asks, How did Rabbi Baravona say this? The Pasuk says, Which means that, yeah, the Gemara here is what we learn out from this Pasuk. 
First beautify yourself, and then you can beautify others. Or it's learned out from the Pasuk over here, Eskaisheshu Vekoshu. Eskaisheshu means you compare yourself. You compare yourself to Hashem. You behave in Hashem's ways. So first, you should go in Hashem's ways. And afterwards, you can bring others to do the same. But you shouldn't wait for them to do what's right and cut down the trees by the edge of the river. He should first go and cut down, and then the others will follow after him. So why did he not cut down? So what answer is Hossam over there by Rabbi Baravona. The case was Abe de Befarzik Rufila Haver. The, the uh, forest that there was further up and further down around him, that was a forest that belonged to Befarzik Rufila, which was a minister, a government official. And Vaamar, so therefore what Rabbi Baravona was saying is that they're uh, not necessarily going to cut, they're not necessarily going to follow what I do if I'm going to cut down my, the, my trees here near the river. So he kites, so if they are going to cut, kites on them, then I'm also going to cut. But we like kites, so if they're not going to be ready to cut down their trees near the river, I'm my ekets. What's the point of me cutting my trees that are here in between? If even without cutting, you're able to pull the ropes and come in, so that's enough even without cutting. So you don't even need me to cut. And if it, you can't pull in the boat there with the ropes because of the trees here, so the fact that I'm going to cut in the middle and before me and after me, the trees are not going to be cut down, it's not going to be helpful either way. You're going to have to go around to the other side anyway. So what's the point of me cutting down? So therefore, therefore let's wait to see if this government official, is whether he's ready to cut down the trees here. Now what happened here is, Rabbi Barav Nachman, have a cause of Arba, Rabbi Barav Nachman was traveling on a boat here in this river. He noticed here this forest, that is the trees are all the way up to the edge of the river. So he said to the people with him, the man, um, the man who, uh, whose forest is this? <coughs> so they answered him, the Rabbi Baravuna. It belongs to Rabbi Baravuna. So Omar, he said about this, Rabbi Baravuna was such a great person, and he still allowed, his, he left his trees all the way up to the river. That Viyad, Asarim, Vazganim, Hoysub, Amalazeh. This is uh, in Ezra, in times in the beginning of the second base of Mikdash, they said the hands of the ministers and the ones that are the second to them, they were the ones that the bad things came from them. Meaning to say, Rishayna, first. Same here, Rabbi Baravuna is so great and, and such bad behavior comes from such great people first. So Amaluhu, Rav Nachman, who was the Rabbi Barav Nachman, that is, <coughs> said, Kutsu, cut down this forest near the tree, near, near the uh, river. Kutsu, they went and they cut down the trees. Now, also Rabbi Baravone, <coughs> Rabbi Baravone returned and was there. Ashkeche the kites. He found that the, his trees near the river were cut. Omar, so he asked, Man Katsye. Omar actually, he said, Man Katsye, whoever is the one that cut down these trees, Tokuts Anfe. His uh, branches, which are his children, should also be cut, should die. So Omri, they said about this, Kulu Shani, the Rabbi Baravona, as long as Rabbi Baravona was alive, Loyikayim Le Zare, Le Rabbi Barav Nachman. Rabbi Nachman's children did not live because of this that he did to, to Rabbi Baravona. Omar Rav Yudah, another Allah that Rav Yudah said, Hakoil Le Igle Gapa. Everybody is obligated to help, to participate in building a wall around the city and building the doors properly to protect the city. And if you're collecting every money from everyone to participate with this, you collect even from Yusayman. Aval, with one exception. Rabbanon, loy. The Rabbanon, the ones that are learning Taita, from them you don't collect, they don't have to participate. Why not? My time, Rabbanon, loy, tzrichinitiruse. The Rabbanon do not need this wall for their protection. For, because for the Rabbanon, their learning Taita is their protection. As Rashi brings the Pasik, it says regarding Taita, b'shach b'cha, even in your sleep, the Taita will uh, protect you. Now, the Pasya, when it comes to digging for well water or for the water from springs, so to, in order to participate with this, to have water, that's also from everybody you have to take from this, even from the Rabbanon as well, because they also need water to drink. This is only if. They're not, the, the people in here in the city don't go out themselves to go and dig. So then, if it's just money that they're collecting and they have other people that are hired to do it, so then the Rabbanon don't have to, sorry, do have to participate. But if the people go together out to dig, 
And then the Rabbanon don't have to go themselves out to dig for the water. The Rabbanon love b'nei meipek bach luzen inu. The Rabbanon are not, it's not for them to be the ones to go out and dig for well water. Amar Rav Yehuda, another Allah Rav Yehuda said, Lekariye denara. When you have a river that gets uh, clogged up. Now this is a river that's, that's flowing and it goes downstream and you have people that have their properties upstream and they get from the water from the river and then you have people that are further downstream and also get water from this river. So what happens now if the river got clogged up? Tatoi misaye iloi. People that are downstream have to assist the people that are upstream if the water got clogged up upstream. So then who's the one that needs the water here? Who's, you, who's losing out from the fact that it got clogged up? Not only the people that are there where it got clogged up upstream, but the people downstream are also not getting water. So they all need it equally. So they have to both participate in clearing up the water that the water should flow down. However, on the other hand, Eloi, Eloi Misai Tatoi. But the people that are upstream do not have to assist the people that are downstream. If the clog happened downstream and only the properties downstream are not getting water, but the people upstream have water, so for them it doesn't affect them at all. They don't have any obligation to participate to fix the help to, with the water that is downstream. Now, v'chilofa, the salacha will be the exact opposite, b'maya demitra. When it comes to water, to the wa water from rain that's draining out. Because over there, it's going to be the exact opposite. If you have water that's draining out, so if the water gets clogged up uh, upstream, so then the people downstream are not suffering from that. Adarabe, the water is not coming in their direction. They won't be flooded. The people upstream are suffering alone. They're the ones that it's their issue that they're going to be flooded because the, water, because the drainage area is blocked. On the other hand, if the water gets clogged downstream, so then everybody's suffering, not only the people downstream, but because there's a blockage downstream, so even further up in the drainage system, it also gets backed up and they're going to suffer as well. So therefore, the ones upstream have to help with the blockage that there is in the drainage system downstream. Tanya, Nami, Hachi, we learned similar in Abraiz. Chamesh, Ginois, you have five gardens. Hamestapkes, Mayim, Mimayin, Echad. And they all get their water from one stream that's flowing downstream. V'neskal Kalamayin, and the water, the flow of the water became ruined. Kulan, Mesak, Nois, Emal, Yaina. Everybody's going to have to help with the people of upstream that the water got clogged up there. So the halacha here, it comes out that the ones that are further below always have to help out with the ones that are further up if the water got clogged up by them. Because since they're below, they also are benefiting. It's their issue as well when it gets clogged up. But, umesakenes, and but on the other hand, the ones that are below stream, they're going to have to fix it themselves and they can't turn to the ones that are upstream to help them because the ones that are upstream are not suffering at all from whatever clog happens downstream, as we said before. V'chein, similar when it comes now to water that is draining out, similar to what it said before regarding rain, if there are four or five, sorry, courtyards that had a drainage system where the water drains out, the rainwater or the dirty water that drains out into one biv, echot, to one place where it drains out, and the drainage system gets clogged up, kulan mesakna is the all of the ones that are further up in these courtyards have to help out the one at the bottom. Because if it's clogged at the bottom, then it gets backed up all the way on the top. So then it comes out, the ones that are upstream are always going to have to help if it gets clogged up by anyone further down. Because he suffers from the backup as well. But if the clogging happens up by the, by the courtyard, which is highest up, then the ones that are further down are not suffering from that. It gets clogged there and they don't have any flood, any, any issues in their sewage, so therefore they don't have to help him. Omar Shmuel, Shmuel said, another locha, Haiman da Achzik, Berakse Denara. Person that comes and possesses a property that's right near the river. Now we're talking about a river that is ownerless, it's Hefker. Ashi here says it's in the times of the Persians that there were certain empty and Hefker properties that it was allowed for anybody to, to possess and use as long as he paid taxes. So but this person that comes and possesses this property right at the edge of the river, Chatzifa. So this is a chutzpah that have because here in this area where everyone has to dock with their boats and come out and he comes and possesses it and makes it private property and starts planting there, it inconveniences everybody. Now, we can't uh, remove him from there because he has the rights technically, legally to go and possess it and pay taxes, but nevertheless, it's a chutzpah to go and do such a thing. 
Now, now that what happens is the Kokosri Parsoi, that the Persians, when they sell property, they would write now, Koniloch Admole Tzavre Susiamaya. The people that bought properties near the river, they wouldn't leave the area near the river empty and, and ownerless. They would actually write in the documents that a property that's being bought is being bought and it, it extends all the way out, even into the river itself, to the point where a, a horse could go and the water gets up to its neck. So, so, so look, you know, someone that goes and wants to possess that area, we can remove him from there because it's privately owned property. Uh, owned by, who? by the people that bought it, by people that bought it. It, beca it became the custom that when people bought properties near the river, it was privately owned. They wrote that whoever is buying, usually it used to be kept empty. It was ownerless. But then they wrote that, no, the person that buys, buys all the way out into the river. So who are you misalicing? The one that, a uh, person that just wants to come along and possess the area. Now the, only, the person that owns it doesn't plant there. He leaves the area empty because it's an area that you need people to, to come in from the river with their boats. So if someone wants to come and begin planting in that area, you could remove him because uh, it's actually privately owned. A person that comes and possesses a property that was hefker, but it's between brothers that are splitting their inheritance or it's between partners. It's also a chutzpah, even though it's ownerless and he could technically come and possess it, but because it's between brothers and between partners, so you should allow these brothers or partners to go and use it so they should be able to have one big property here. But we can't remove him. Rav Nachman says, Nami misakinan. We cannot. We could remove him from the property as well. It's not only a chutzpah, but we can remove him from the property, and that's if it could be proven that it that it's owned by them or they have a right to it. But vi mishum dina de bar metzra loy misakinale. If you want to remove him based on the concept of dina de bar metzra, what's the concept of dina de bar metzra? As the is going to bring right here shortly, that when a person buys a property or when someone's selling a property. You give the first, first rights to buy it to the neighbor, the bar metzer, the one that's on the border. And if, so, if someone else that's not a neighbor buys it, so he has to give it up to the owner, to the to the neighbor that's here. So Rab Nachman actually says though that if you want to remove this person that possessed a property between brothers, between uh, partners, and now you want to remove him because of the disdain of bar metzer, then you can't remove him for this. That's Rav Nachman's opinion. According to Rashi, it's Mashma. Rashi says here that Rav Nachman does not at all hold of this entire concept of Dina de Bar Metzra, that the one that's on the border has the first rights to buy the property. From Taisus, it, it say, he says, and other Rishayim say that no, of course, Rav Nachman also held of this Dina of Bar Metzra, as we'll see here, I'll also hear about this now. LMI, here, this case is different because. The people that live here in this area, this property in between was Hefker, and they didn't possess it. They had a chance to possess it for themselves, and they didn't. So they were Michael it. And now after he comes and possesses it, they want to take it away from him. We don't apply Dinda Bar over here in such a case. So we're already Michael this. That place is his shot. Nerdoi Yomri, Nerdoi say, Afilamishum Dinda de Bar Metzra, Mesakina lay. Because of the halacha of the rights of a bar metzre that has the first rights to buy the property, we remove someone else that comes and wants to possess in between these brothers or partners. The source of the concept of bar metzre is based on the pasuk that says you should do what's straight and what's good in the eyes of Hashem. So here you have a person that if, if for him it's the con convenience to have one long property to be able to plant it all together and he doesn't have to schlep his machinery from one area to another. And here you have a buyer that doesn't own a property in this area. Yet. Why should he buy here? He can find a property to buy somewhere else. Let him go and buy somewhere else. So therefore, the owner, the um, the, the, the neighbor the, on, the, on the border, he has the first rights to buy. And even when someone else comes and buys, he has to allow the owner to buy, it, the, the neighbor that is, to buy it out from him, to, to, to take it away from him. And he'll have to reimburse him, of course, for the money that he paid for it. But that's the Allah of Dinah Dabar Metzre. It's the Allah of Dinah Dabar Metzre, as we'll see from the continuation of the Gemara, it lies on the... It's a halacha that Chachamim instituted based on this pasuk of Asisa Yashav Atoiv on the Lekeach. The, the Lekeach, the buyer that's coming from somewhere else, doesn't have the rights to come and buy in this area. And if he did, he has to give it up to the neighbor that's here. Also, in Lichbei, so regarding this halacha of Bar Metzra, here the Gemara is going to go through all the halachas of Bar Metzra. What happens if the buyer came and consulted the neighbor? And he, in other words, he told him, I'm planning on buying this property. Do you agree? You have the first rights to buy, but do you agree? Do you allow it? Can I come and buy here? 
And the neighbor says, yes, go and buy it. Oh, sorry, again, let's, let's, uh, so the, the potential buyer, he comes and uh, says to the neighbor, Ezel Isben, should I go and buy this property? And he says, yeah, sure, go ahead and buy it. So the question is, if the neighbor just gives his word and says, I'm Michael, you can buy it. Do you have to, in addition, make a Kenyan, like Chalipin, to solidify that it shouldn't just be words, but it should be something that is, is, is uh, actually a Kenyan, that it's something that you have to uh, abide to? Or, like, or you don't have to make a Kenyan, just words alone is enough. As in other words, I think uh, Rashi explains that it's possible that the neighbor is telling this person to go and buy here because he knows if he's going to want to go to the seller to buy this property, the seller knows that he's so interested in this property, so he's going to charge him an expensive price. So therefore, he allowed the other person to buy it, but he wasn't really serious that it's going to be his. Then, he, then he's going to say to him, oh, now it's mine, you have to give it to me. Or do we say, no, once you give your word, it's taken seriously and you, know, you don't need a king for this. Ravina says, you don't need to make a kenya for this, the words alone are enough. Nardai say, no, tzarech lemiknamine, you do have to make a kenya, the word itself is not enough. The halacha says, the halacha is, tzarech lemiknamine, you do have to make a kenya. Now the Gemara says, hashtad amre, tzarech lemiknamine, now that you said that you have to make a kenya here, you like konamine, if there was no kenya made, and this buyer came from a different place and bought here, iyakir v'zayl b'rishusei. So if the price of the property went up or it went down, what's the price that the bar metzre that wants to now take the property away from this buyer and he has to reimburse this buyer for what he paid for it, what's the price that he has to pay him for? He has, does he have to pay him for the price that the property value is now? If the price went up or it went down? No, he doesn't have to pay him the price now. He has to pay him the price that the, the buyer paid before. Because when that buyer bought the property before, it's like he's buying it, b'shlichas, this bar metzre. Because the bar metzre is the only true rightful buyer. And you bought it? You bought it for me. Eventually, I'm going to come and confiscate it from you. So it's that price that the first buyer paid for it, that now the bar metzre, the one on the neighbor, the neighbor here, has to reimburse him, regardless of the price went up or down. Zov and Bemeye, what if the uh, buyer bought the property and he paid a hundred for it? And Vishavi mustn't. The true value of this property is double. It's two hundred. So now, when the when the uh, neighbor wants to take away the property from him, what does he have to reimburse him with? Chazina. So we have to see. Ilukulal mekomizila. If for everybody the price now of this property went down and it's cheap, this price and now it is a hundred. Mazvin, and then you can he sells it. The owner, the, the seller, sells it now for a hundred for anybody. So Yavle may have So the bar metzger, the neighbor, comes and reimburses the buyer with one hundred, and he takes the property away from him. The Eloi, if this price of a hundred is not really the value of this property, the, the the seller gave this half price only for this buyer that came from somewhere else. Then it's a lo Yavle Masan. Is a yavle masan that is so the neighbor is going to have to give him two hundred, which is the true value of the property, and then the shakali, and then he could take away the property from him. What's if the case was the opposite? Zavim b'masan v'shav yemeya. This buyer paid double price. He paid two hundred for this property, and the property is only worth one hundred. So now, when the neighbor wants to take it away from him, how much does he have to reimburse him? Zavim mino. So they thought to say matzi amalei. So the neighbor can say to this buyer that bought it, as mentioned before, this buyer that comes and buys it is almost like a shliach that's buying it for the neighbor because he's not supposed to buy it. You're buying it, but then you're sort of buying it for me because I'm going to confiscate it from you. So now he paid double price. And now he comes to the neighbor and says, oh, I paid double price. Give me double price for this. So the, but no, the neighbor could say to him, I sent you to do something which is good for me but not to do something to cause me a loss now because you decided to pay double price and therefore I should reimburse you double price. That's what they thought to say. So he said to Ravashi, no, When it comes to properties, there's no I know when you overpay, and then sometimes it could be a mekachto, so you have to go back on the whole sale and so on. That doesn't apply when it comes to property. By property, even if you pay double, if that's what was paid for, that was the price of the property that he was ready to pay for it, and therefore now you have to reimburse him that full price. I believe one of the Rishayim say this is only in such a kind of case where you didn't literally appoint them as your shliach. In a case where you mamish appointed a shliach, 
then you're not going to say this. You, you, if a person buys a property, if you double the price that it is, it's going to be, you're not, you're not going to have to reimburse him for all of that. But over here, he's not a real shliach. Over here, this takon of chazal, that you're able to push out this buyer. And it's as if he bought it for you, even if you paid a high price, whatever it may be, you have to reimburse him whatever the price is. What happens if there's a property to sell there? And there's a bar metzah, there's a neighbor. But there's now another buyer that came from somewhere else. And what did he do? He bought a portion, a certain measurement of this property in the center of this property that's being sold. So now what happens? The person, the new buyer that bought a property right in the center, he actually becomes now the new bar metzah for the remainder of the property that's all around that center of the property. And he's now more of a bar metzah than the original bar metzah on the side because his property is now surrounded with all of the remainder of the property all around this property. So now, but the question though is, it could be that this is all a ploy because he knows that he can't come and buy this property because he's not the Bar Metzre. So what does he do? First, he comes and buys in the center. Now he becomes a bigger Bar Metzre than the original Bar Metzre. And then he says, okay, so it's all mine. So we have to see what was done here. Chazina, we have to see. If that piece of property that he bought in the center is an exceptional good quality, so we could say that he didn't buy it, it's not a ploy. He bought it because it's a very good quality. Or if it's Ziburis, even if it's a very low quality, but it's a different quality than the rest of the property. So maybe he bought that center because it was very cheap. So we don't look at it as a ploy, and now he actually becomes the bigger bar metzri here. But the Eloi, but if that property that he bought in the center is the same quality as the rest of the property, and there's no reason to explain why he's buying Dafke right in the middle here. So then we know that it's just a ploy in order for him to become the Bar Metzre and to not allow the, the neighbor to buy this property as should be. Fight to the Gemara says, Matona. Here the Gemara is going to bring a bunch of different cases where there's an exception, where we don't apply the halacha of Bar Metzre. Matona, less be mishum the Bar Metzre. In a case where you're gifting the property to someone, the Allah of Bar does not apply. Right? So this is a person that's not even interested in selling. The neighbor can't come and say, sell to me. So I'm not interested in selling at all. He's giving it to a gift to one person. So then there's no dinner Bar Metzre. Oh, but Amemet, however, even regarding a gift, Amemet says, Ikos of Leachrayis is Bebishum Dine de Bar If you give a gift and you write to the recipient that I take responsibility, that if anything that goes wrong with this property, anyone confiscates it from you, I will reimburse you, then there is a Dine de Bar because then it's not treated like a gift. Then it's already like a sale that you're taking responsibility for it. Then the Dine de Bar will apply. If the seller is selling all of his properties to one individual and it happens to be, now there's a buyer that's buying everything. One of those properties, there's one bar metzra over here on this property. In such a case, less lo mishum dine de bar metzra. There's no aloch of bar metzra because we don't say rashis pshadir is, we don't say bar metzra on the expense of the benefit of the seller. The seller, he says, for me, it's the most convenient thing. I have one buyer that's buying all my properties. For you, it's convenient that one of the properties, you're a neighbor, but then I'm going to lose out that you don't want to buy from me all the other properties. So, they, so therefore, I have now one buyer for everything. The dinner bar metzah does not apply. If the seller is selling this property back to an original owner that used to own this property, then less no mishum dinner bar metzah. There's also no Allah bar metzah. Because just like it's inconvenient for the, bar, for the person, on the, the neighbor, to have one big property here, it's definitely the right and good thing, a yashar v'toyif, to give it back to the original owner that lived there and then wants to have his property back. Zov and meyakom, if this was a property that belonged to a guy, and you bought the property from a guy, or vizavim la'akom, or it's a property that you sold it to a guy. In both of these cases, less ba mishum dina de ba metzre. The Allah of ba does not apply. And the Gemara explains why not. Zovan meyakom, if you bought the property from a guy and you didn't give the neighbor the first chance to buy it, there's no din of bar metzre that you have to give up the property for the neighbor. Because you say to this neighbor, Ari, avra lochom metzre. I did you a favor. You had a guy here that may have been antagonizing you and you had issues with him. And I got this guy like a lion. I got him away from your borders. I'm only doing you a favor. Zovin le'akom, when you sell the property to a guy, so the halacha of bar metzre does not apply. Why not? Because akom, when it comes to a guy, vaday lav bar It's not possible for the guy to fulfill this v'asisva yashavatoy. 
So here it actually explains the fundamental point regarding this whole concept of Bar Metzre, Vasisa, Yashar, Vatoiv. The whole halacha of Bar Metzre is not a takana that lies upon the meicher, on the seller, that he shouldn't sell to this or to that person. As far as the seller is concerned, he owns the property, and if he decides he doesn't want to sell, he can continue keeping, holding on to the property for himself, obviously. He doesn't have to give it away to the neighbor. It's the buyer that Chachamim placed the takana on the buyer that he should not buy the property when there's a neighbor here that for him it's more convenient. And if he buys, he has to give up the property for the neighbor. So if it's a guy that bought, the takana does not apply to the guy. That's Rashi's pshat. But, however, at the same time, the seller that sold the property to the guy, Shumuti Vadim Shamtinale, we definitely would put him into a Shamuti and a Chaydim, Adam Akabalale, Kolainsi Dosile Machmose, until he accepts upon himself any issues, any problems that can come up from the fact that you sold a property that's near Yidin to a guy, you have to take upon yourself any issues that will be from this. Another case where there's no din about metre, mashkante, less be mishum din about metre, a property that was given to a lender as a mashkin, as a collateral. And then that lender, he held on to the property for an extended period of time as a payment for the loan. And now you want to just sell it to that lender. So over here, the din of our metre does not apply either. Nama Ravashi, Ravashi said, Omnuli Sabi, the Mosa Machasye, the elders of Moshe Machasya said to me, my mashkante, what's the meaning of the word mashkante? The shchone gabe, that he's considered to be a neighbor for this property. And my nafkimine, what's the relevance of this expression that he's a neighbor for this property? Ledine the bar metzre. It's for the halach of bar metzre that he now, this lender that was occupying this property for the mashkin, is also considered to be a neighbor here, and therefore he, has the, he can buy the property even before the neighbor. Others add also another swatter that over here, the din of Yashar Vatoiv actually says that you should give the lender the first right to buy because he did you a favor. He lent you money. So you're doing him back a favor, giving him the first, uh, the first rights to buy this property. Vaitar, another case here, Rashi actually says, hold on a second, yeah, this is still Allah regarding Bar Metzre. Limkar berachoik v'ligal bekaroiv. If you have a person that is looking to sell a property because it's a far distance from where he is. He wants to get rid of that property in order to take the money now and redeem and buy another property that's close to him. So in other words, this is a person that found an opportunity to buy the property that's close to him and he needs the money right away. He's looking for a buyer that's going to immediately buy this property that was far from him to have the money available to buy for a, pro a property that's close. Or Berav, a little bit He's trying to get rid of a bad quality property because he has an opportunity to buy a good quality property. Lesba Mishum Dina de Bar Metzre. Here as well, we don't apply Bar Metzre to give the neighbor the first rights because if you're going to give the neighbor the first rights, this may schlep out until he's going to buy it from you and, and make the money available for you. But you have an opportunity right now to buy a property that you need. So therefore, another buyer that's coming from far away and is ready to give you the money right now, if, if you never say Bar Metzre on the expense of and a loss of the seller. Lekarge, if you're selling your property because you need money to pay the head tax, or lemezayni, you need money to be able to pay, to feed an almana or yusaymim, that there's an obligation to feed them, or lekvure for burial, less bar mishum dina de bar metzre. Here as well, you need the money right away. There's no halacha that we give a chance to the bar metzre to buy the property. Da'amri nerdoi, as nerdoi said, lekarge lemezayni lekvure, when it comes to these three things, for head tax or for food or for uh, burial, mezavnina b'loy achrasta. When you sell the properties, you don't have to go through the usual process of an auction to make sure you get the right price. You sell it to get the money as quickly as possible. Le'isha or le'yasmi, if it's a woman or if it's isaymim, that don't really have much of an opportunity to go and buy a property for themselves. And here, the fact that he found this property and the seller was ready to sell it to them and they bought this property, so for them, there's no Allah of Asisa as much as it's the right and good thing to sell it to the neighbor, when you see people like poor people or people that are like Aisha and Yusayman, that for them, this is their opportunity to buy a house or a property, so it's the right thing to allow them to keep it. If you sold the property to a, to a shutif, to a partner, there's also no Allah of Metzre because this is for him, he's a shutif here, so therefore he has a shutfis in your property, that you're, so therefore he, he is the closer connection to this property, even more than the Bar Metzre. Here is where Rashi says, the next little piece of Gemara here, is not speaking about the issue of the, the halach of Bar Metzre. Here it's Bakhlal talking about when a person is selling and he has a choice who to sell to. So here it's telling you who is the better person you should give the first preference to, to buy. You have neighbors and they're your neighbors in, in the city. You live, uh, your house is near his house. 
and you have other people that are neighbors that your fields are near each other. And you're selling a property. Now, this is not a bar mitzvah, a mitzvah question, but again, it's a question, which neighbor should you give the preference to buy first? The neighbors that you have, that live, you live near them in the city, they come first. If you have a preference, whether you're going to give the preference to a neighbor or to a Talmud Chacham to buy the property first, the Talmud Chacham comes first. If it's either to sell to a relative or to a Talmud Chacham, Talmud Chacham Kaidim, Talmud Chacham comes before. If you have a choice to either sell to a neighbor or to sell to a relative, who comes first? The Pasuk says, It's better. A close neighbor, from a brother that's in a distance. So you should first sell it to a neighbor. Now the Gemara does come back to the halachas of Bar Metzre. What happens if the buyer gives very good money, meaning the coins that are uh, very good in circulation, and the Hani Zuzi Takuli, and the neighbor that wants to buy in his place, he says, I have the first rights to buy. He's giving heavy weighty coins, but they're not as uh, coins that are good, as good in circulation as the, uh, the buyer that's here. Last baby shum dinner deba metzra. There's no dinner deba metzra either because the, the seller, he's going to lose out. He's not going to get the best coins for the sale. Hani Tsaidi. The neighbor is paying with money that's, that's tied up in a bundle and you don't see exactly what there's there. Hani Shari. And the buyer that's here is gives the money, it's open, and you see right away the money that you get for it. There's also no Allah of Bar Metzra. Omar Ezel Etrach. What if the neighbor says, Give me a chance to go and figure out how I'm going to get money to buy this property? And if I Zuzi, I'll bring money. We don't wait for him. Omar Ezel Aisi Zuzi. What is if the neighbor says, I'm not going to have to go figure out. I have money in my house. Give me a chance to bring money from my house to buy the property. So Chazinon, we have to look and see, the if it's the person that we evaluate him, that he's rich and he's able to bring the money right away, the Ozla Maisi Zuzi, that he's going to go and bring the money, not So we do wait for him. But Viloi, if we know that he doesn't have the money, we don't have to wait for him. Now what happens if you have a property, the actual land belongs to one, and the house that's sitting on the land was sold, it was sold for a certain number of years to someone else that owns the house. So the owner of the land could hold back the owner of the house to sell the house to someone else because he's the landowner here and he owns the land forever here now. So he wants to have the first rights to buy the house from him. But the owner that owns now the house cannot prevent the one that owns the property to sell this uh, property to someone else because they just own this house on this property temporarily. The property belongs to one person and there's a palm tree that was sold and belongs to someone else. He owns that palm tree for a number of years. He owns the palm tree until it'll, until it'll dry up. So again, the, the landowner could hold back the owner of the tree to sell that tree to someone else. But the one that owns the tree cannot hold back from the landowner of selling this, this land to someone else. Now, if there's a buyer that wants to buy this property because he wants to build a house on it. And there's the neighbor here, which has usually the first rights, he's the bar metzre, but he only wants to buy the property, Lizara. He wants to plant uh, wheat or, uh, or other, other things like that. So the Allah is Yishuv Adif, the one that's going to settle this. We're calling, talking about a very Eretz Yisrael to settle this. I believe it's talking about an Eretz Yisrael. So in order to build a house, to settle, that's more important. The less Mamishum did the Bar and therefore we give it to the buyer and not to the neighbor. Now this is, the Mepharshim say, this is only talking about when the neighbor says he's going to plant wheat over here. But we had before in the Gemara that when it comes to planting trees for Yishuv Eretz Yisrael, planting trees is actually more important than building houses. If there's a big separation between this property that's being sold and the neighbor's property, there's a big rock that separates, or there's a row of palm trees that separate. So the neighbor can't come and say that it's more convenient for me to buy the property of Asit Savayash because I'll have it all as one because there's a big separation between them. So Chazina, we have to see, if there's even just one row that does have a connection that he can go through both properties to plant all together, so it still is a benefit for the neighbor, is 
the halacha bar metzra still applies. Vilesba, vilesba, vilay. That is, if you don't, you don't even have the ability to pant one row together. Lesba mishum dina the bar metzra. The halacha bar metzra does not apply. Ha nidalim bnei matzroni. If you have a property and there are four neighbors on the four sides of the property. And what happened? The Kadum Chad Minayavizavin, one of the neighbors, went ahead of everyone else and went and bought this property. And the other ones are arguing, we're also neighbors here. Why, why do you get the first right before us? But once he bought it first, Zvine Zvini, the sale is a sale and he can keep it. If, if, if all of these neighbors all came at the same time and they all claimed that they want to have the right to buy it, what do we do? So we have to split it. Pagaluho be carnisal. It has to be split the carnisal. Carnisal means you split it by a dia- two diagonal lines across and going to the corners. That's the Rashi says carnisal is a combination of two words, ket and zil. You go to the, with a line that goes down to the corner, so every neighbor gets a full, a full property on his side, not just a half. Yeah, you have here the picture on the bottom right near the Rashi. Rashi made this kazet. Rashi made the picture here where you see that everyone is going to get on their side a full, a full area that's connected to his property. Now, just to mention regarding this Gemara of Bar Metzre, there's, an arich, there's a Sikha from the Rebbe, in Chelik Yutes, Parshas Vazchan, on the last Sikha in Vazchan, where the Rebbe discusses a machloikis between Rashi and the Rambam regarding this halacha of Bar Metzre. According to Rashi, the Rebbe proves that Rashi holds that the whole din of Bar Metzre is, as it says in the Gemara of Asisa Yashav Atayv, that it's a, the, the right and good behavior for the, for the buyer not to buy a property when there's a neighbor here. But according to the Rambam, it goes actually a step further. That because of Asisa Vayashav Atoiv, it's considered as if the neighbor already has a Ketzas Kenyan. He already has some real rights, some real Kenyan in this property. So when someone else comes and buys it, you're taking away what belongs to him. And really this is something that applies to the seller as well. This, because the neighbor has a Ketzas Kenyan in this property, it limits the seller who he should be selling to and who he should not be selling to. Because this, based on Vayashav Atoiv, Chachamim created already a Ketzas Kenyan in this property. That was Maz Bebarichas over there, the hardest in the Sikha, different things, Nafke Minister and the Sugya based on this. Sure,